I am honored by our graduates' invitation to present this reflection at the 2018 commencement exercises in the hope that I will not disappoint them in what follows. I will try to follow a norm that should be given to every preacher. Preach about two things, about the gospel and about five minutes. <laughs> Today, I would like to take those few minutes. You can put your phones down at this point as you are timing it. I want to speak about what we may call the duty of joy. As in all things, let us begin with the gospel, and specifically the gospel of St. John in the 15th chapter, which describes the encouraging words of Jesus to his friends before he departs from them. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Let us take to heart today these words. Let us take joy seriously. The words from the Word of God found an echo in the life of St. Francis of Assisi. Shortly after his death in the fall of the year 1226, his friends and companions recalled a remarkable bit of legislation that he wanted included in the rule of life for his followers. And I quote, he so loved the person filled with spiritual joy that he had these words written down as a general admonition. Let them be careful not to appear outwardly as sad and gloomy hypocrites, but show themselves joyful, cheerful, and consistently gracious in the Lord. In his own writings, in fact, Francis had already written about those who, like our graduates today, have an uplifting effect on others. He wrote, blessed is that person who leads others to the love of God with gladness and joy. Joy, then, in the words and example of Francis, inspired by the words of Jesus in the gospel, is an active spiritual practice, a defensive shield, a source of encouragement for others. We might just say that in our Franciscan tradition, joy is a duty. And each of you graduates today assume this duty of joy in a special way. Each of you has made a public commitment to live the gospel according to the example of St. Francis, St. Clare, and their followers. Some as members of the Order of the Brothers, the Friars Minor, who follow this way of life as professed religious. Some as members of the secular Franciscan order or third order of St. Francis, which offer, offers single and married people the opportunity to live according to this vision with their careers and family responsibilities. Each of you is called to be that person who, as Francis says, leads people to the love of God with gladness and joy. But can we say that joy is really a duty? It seems strange as an expression. But there's good evidence that this teaching 
of the little poor man of Assisi can really be understood today as one of the pillars of Christian life. At least in my reading of the recent documents of the Pope Francis, it seems that joy has come to take its place as one of the most important and sometimes overlooked gifts of the Holy Spirit. Just listen to the names of recent encyclicals and I think my point will be well demonstrated. In 2013, we heard the proclamation Evangelii Gaudium, the joy of the gospel. In 2016, we read of Amoris Laetitia, the joy of love, concluding the Synod of Bishops on the family. Most recently, this past March, we have read the call of the Holy Father to holiness for all Christians, Gaudete et exultate, rejoice and be glad. Do these joy-filled titles mean that the world has suddenly become carefree? Have all wars and violence ceased? Have all family problems been resolved? Have all the poor been fed? Has the entire creation been rescued from environmental harm? Not at all. The joy of which Pope Francis and Saint Francis speak is not a joy that is based on successful outcomes, nor is it the superficial slogan of some slick advertising campaign. It is rather the fruit of a difficult determination to believe, to believe that the risen Christ has triumphed over death, to believe that the goodness of God prevails over the evil we are capable of inflicting on each other, and to believe that every human person is, at their core, built for goodness, because all are created for God. The commencement exercises we celebrate today come on the heels of an important announcement from the consistory of cardinals gathered with the Holy Father this past week, in which they gave their favorable vote to the request that Pope Paul VI should be canonized as a saint of the Universal Church. On the same day, the Archbishop of San Salvador, Monsignor Oscar Romero, martyr for the oppressed of his homeland, will be raised also to the dignity of the saints. The ceremony will take place in Rome, my new home, on October 14th in St. Peter's Square. You're all invited and we'll give you lunch. <laughs> this magnificent gesture underscores the remarkable continuity with the vision of a church expressed in the final documents of the Second Vatican Council. Begun under one saint, Pope John XXIII, and concluded under the other, the newly designated saint, Paul VI. The documents and the vision of the church they express have animated the educational programs of FST from its later years in the 60s at Mission Santa Barbara to its long history at the Graduate Theological Union in Berkeley, of which Carl has been such an important member, and now here at Mission San Luis Rey. And we should recall that that council's landmark document, the pastoral constitution on the church in the modern world, bears the title Gaudium et Spes, joy and hope. The vision that continues to animate theological education at FST today includes joy in the proclamation of the gospel, 
hope for a world marred by tragedy and hatred, but one also redeemed by the love of Christ, the beloved Son, the Word made flesh. It is this vision that, graduates, we know you have also <coughs> shown in the hard work you've done in classes, the generous service you've done in your ministry placements, and encapsulated by this commencement exercise, which we celebrate to honor you today. We cannot see now where your journey will take you in the future, bitter or sweet. You will go your separate ways to serve the Lord and his people in Korea, in Mexico, and in northern San Diego County and beyond. Your paths will be different, but the one who leads you will be the same, keeping you united of one heart and mind, as St. Luke tells us of the church at Pentecost. You will become the joy of the gospel in different cultures, speaking different languages, much like the apostles who, beginning in Jerusalem, proclaimed the gospel to the ends of the earth. We resist the temptation to keep you here. You have been called to something beyond our little local church. We entrust you to the guidance of the Holy Spirit, the one St. Francis called the true superior of all Franciscans. That spirit will rest upon you and will bring all of us together again in joy at a day and an hour that we never know. Then we will rejoice together with you at the banquet of that risen Lord who always remains with us. May that same Lord give you peace. Congratulations.